Hi Ronald, this is Petros Christophos and uh, I'm so happy that you could send your video uh, so we can get some uh, look at your forehand and uh, I hope my advice and feedback to you will be valuable so you can improve your forehand but here's a few things I, uh, I think you can change a little bit so your forehand can be improved dramatically over a period of time and over practice obviously. So. Uh, I've taken a look at your video and a few things I can point right away is, uh, f well first of all, forehand. The main thing about the forehand that I tell people that they can immediately change to improve is number one, uh, the base. Uh, footwork is actually the most important thing uh, and being in a ready position is actually the most important thing to hit a, a, a good forehand. It has nothing to do with how strong you are, how hard you hit the ball is the base and early preparation and that's all you need. The rest will take care of itself. I, I took a look at your video and you have a nice follow through, but here's a few things that you can change right now so you can improve it. Number one, the base. I've seen a lot of people do this, but I've seen you uh, having your uh, feet very close together sometimes, so there's not much uh, transfer of power. You're basically standing, you're waiting for the ball, you're standing and you're hitting a forehand like this and then you're just following through and if I took a picture of you here, it looks great, but if I take a look at the whole video, it, 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 you're lacking transfer of power. So number one thing you can do is split step, get ready, and then have a wider base so you can transfer the energy from this leg to the next. What do I mean by that? If you're standing, then there's not much transfer of power you can, you can move around. There's basically monetary transfer and you're just moving your shoulders and back and forth so you can hit the forehand. If you make a, a good split step and you open your legs wide open, that's where you can transfer the power and then you can move forward. You, sometimes what you're doing is you're hitting a forehand and you're ready here and then you're just doing that. There's no really transfer of power. A good forehand, a proper forehand will look something like that if you want to see it on the side. I'm here, split step, I'm opening my my legs and I'm bending this leg and I'm transferring power from this leg to the next and then I can move forward so I can push my, my body forward. Uh, that's something you're not doing. So you're following through with the shoulders but you're not following through with the hips. That's not helping you. So if you can widen your legs so you have a wider base, then you can hit forehands in a better angle and more power. That's one. Another thing I looked at and it's, it's, a, sm it's a minor detail that it can change your forehand right away is, I hope you can see my feet here, but when you're stepping on the forehand side, you're using your toes, right? So let's say I'm, I'm doing a split step and your first step here is with the toe. This is blocking your follow through. What do I mean by that? If you're walking forward, you're not walking on your toes, right? You're walking heel first and then toe. So you can transfer the power forward with no effort whatsoever. What you're doing is you're putting your feet forward but the toe comes first. That, that's blocking your, your transfer of power and you're also going to hurt your knees because if you're doing this, this is what basketball players are doing on the court and that's why they have so many injuries um, on, on their knees. You should have your leg, your feet come more naturally forward just like you're walking. What do I mean by that is split step and then my heel comes first and then my toes come second so I can just continue the transfer of power. I don't know if that makes sense to you but I'm sure it does since you're, if you're thinking about walking, that's how, that's how you walk. You don't walk on your toes like that because there's not much transfer of power. You're going heel first and then toe so you can move forward and it looks something like that. Getting ready position, heel comes first, I'm opening up and then I'm moving forward. Uh, your follow through, as I said, is very good, but you have no transfer of power from the hips to the shoulders because of this as well. You're using your toes, so it's blocking you. You can't go forward. If you go, you're going to fall. So if you have heel first, then toes, I think that's going to help you. And the third one I saw is you're doing what a lot of players are doing, and it's a very, it, it takes a lot of effort and it can make you tired but what you're doing is you're waiting for the ball to come to you i know you you're hitting with a machine which is great but if you can try to adjust and adapt earlier you can get in a better position for the shot what do i mean by that is let's say the machine is right in front of me and i'm waiting for the ball since you know that the ball is coming to you you can move out of the way 
to go back to the ball. If let's say you have scheduled the machine to hit balls right in front of you and you know sometimes you can get lazy and if I know the ball is coming right here I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna turn and then I'm just gonna hit. I'm gonna split step, turn, I'm gonna hit. If you want to get in a better position then if you know the ball is coming to you you should split step, move out of the way, go a little bit back so you can go forward again with the ball and then transfer the power. You don't want to stay in one position and hit shots like that because your shots are not going to go anywhere. They're so predictable and you can't transfer the power. If you can be in a more ready position, you don't want to, you don't want to be waiting like this. Nobody waits like that. You've got to be a, a little wide, wider feet, come a little lower and then just be ready to split step and get out of the way so the ball can come and then you go to the ball. Don't wait for the ball. Don't ever wait for the ball. Split step, move out of the ball, move out of the way depending on where the ball is coming to prepare fast and then go back to the ball. Don't wait for it to come to you. You're losing valuable time and valuable power. And the fourth thing I would say that is really important is I've seen you hit open stands and closed stands. I don't know which is better for you, but uh, the rule of thumb for me when I'm hitting forehands is if the ball is shoulder height or lower, I prefer to hit closed stands forehand because it gives me greater strength when I'm hitting the ball and when I'm turning my shoulders and moving uh, my, my energy transfer from my legs, from the back leg to the front leg. It's the same with pitchers. If you see the pitchers, they throw on this, on this height right here, they're doing a close stance because they can get more rotation from the hips and the shoulders. If you're hitting open stance, it's much tougher to actually turn because you, you have less rotation power from here, whereas if I'm here, my chest is facing you now, and when I'm hitting forehands, it's gonna turn the other way. So now you can see my back, right? So this rotation right here can only come from close stance forehands. So my, try this, this is, this is it, it's uh, subjective, it's whatever works for you, but I think this, this helps most people because it just makes sense. If the ball is shoulder height and lower, try to hit close stance forehands, and obviously, Follow the other things I've said, rotation of, rotation of the hips, the shoulders, transfer of power, and the toes, obviously. If you do all that, you're gonna generate so much more power. So just remember, shoulder height and lower, try close stance. If it's above the shoulder, I understand it's much tougher to bring a ball from, from up here down low. If it's open stance, then you can really come slap it down. That's, that's basically what it is. It's from here, and then if it's open stance, I have more rotation if it's up here. If it's close, then I need to turn my shoulders just so I can generate more power. So these are a, a couple of things, uh, three, four things I think that uh, are the most important uh, for your uh, case uh, in terms of your forehand and uh, try them out, try them with your machine and uh, yeah, really looking forward to hear the feedback and uh, let me know if any of this helped you and uh, yeah, let's keep in touch and uh, good luck.